Welcome to Ascension Integration with Sandra Walter. Hello and welcome to Ascension Integration. I'm Sandra Walter. This week I wanted to speak about embracing the unknown. The Ascension process is a choice. And when I say that, yes, the frequency is affecting everyone on the planet, but engaging with the ascension process in order to accelerate a level of evolution is a choice. And we go through some unknowns when it comes to this new territory. Sometimes I compare the ascension process to an invisible staircase. You know that there's a step there, and you forge forward and take that step not knowing if the stair is going to meet you or not, and it always does. So when it comes to the ascension process, we have different areas where we're embracing the unknown. Physical changes to the body, also known as ascension symptoms, can create Tingles and jingles, ascension, tinnitus, energy surges, dietary changes, exercise changes, energy level changes. Sometimes you're lazy and fatigued. Sometimes you're super high. Sometimes you're super low. Sleep patterns get interrupted or change altogether. You start seeing light, sparkling you know, things from, from sparkles in, in your bedroom to all-out beings standing around you, wavy light energy patterns, flashes occur in the brain at first as the, as the brain is trying to rewire from left to right. And then sometimes you can get that flash of what I call dimensional flux, where you'll be standing outside and all of a sudden it, it looks like the the heavens or the earth itself uh, took a flash photo. You're like, what, what, what was that? <laughs> and uh, I just call that dimensional flux. But that, uh, and the solar flares can affect the cardiovascular system. But these are all venturing into the unknown when it comes to the physical changes to the body and these ascension symptoms. After a while, we kind of know when things are occurring. Your higher sensitivities start turning on and you go, hmm, do I, do I need to go to the doctor or is this another ascension symptom? Fortunately, we have a lot of symptom support and there's a lot of people out there with knowledge about ascension symptoms and you can just drop us a line and, uh, and we'll tell you what's up. And, and of course, if anybody is feeling severe symptoms, uh, of course, I always recommend going to see a medical doctor or a healer that you trust in person rather than asking a question online. But those phys physical ventures into the unknown as the body changes is that same trust that the butterfly metaphor entails. Letting, you know, the caterpillar goes into the, the cocoon and its entire body gets turned to liquid in order to turn into something else. But it doesn't second guess going in. And when the, when the chrysalis breaks open, of course, it's completely transformed, but its entire body has to go to liquid. And sometimes ascension can feel like that. And another part, another aspect of the unknown is social changes activities are are suddenly completely changed your social your social life changes things that you used to be excited to do you're not interested in anymore friendships drop there's vibrational mismatch between family and and roommates and colleagues suddenly it feels like you're speaking a completely different language or you're not interested anymore and there can be, um, with, with social activities too, there can be a surge in activism, making changes in the community, stepping forward and, and speaking your truth. In the financial realm, there's a bit of an unknown right now. In the ascension path, the financial unknown turns into job change, a push, an internal push into service to others 
creativity becomes more important and that tends to um, lean into what is valuable to me and that can be a scary area to get into when the typical old paradigm financial structure is all about safety, all about how am I going to do it? How am I going to pay my bills? What about my health insurance? Yada, 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 all of that stuff that Ascension folks go through. And you start thinking about how valuable is this to my life stream? How important is all of that safety to what I'm encountering in my life and in my personal life? Does, does any of that really matter? The whole 401k saving up kind of thing becomes very challenged because it is moving into the financial unknown, just like the social unknown and the physical unknown. And we tend to, rather than worry about where the money is coming from, we're more concerned about how that money is earned and then it turns into an energy exchange. Am I really getting paid for something that I love to do that's of uh, the highest interest to everybody? Does my boss have integrity? And am I getting, am I feeling an energy exchange of value? So that's just some of the financial unknown there that we're moving into. The religion and, or spirituality aspect is, is difficult as well. I know a lot of folks are, are going through a, kind of a religious rehab and, and I can't wait to start <laughs> that, to devise that course uh, with a couple of folks, that, that religion rehab, uh, folks coming out of their, their uh, religious structures and very challenged by, what do, I don't know what to believe, I feel like I've been lied to, all of this, all of this different stuff. And there's an, an exploration and questioning of the existence of God, what does that mean? You start getting into the I am state, and we have to get over our fear of the self as God. I wrote about that last year. But once you get past that, it's like, what does it really mean to be source? The questioning of our existence turns into the knowing of the self as source, I used to. I, I like to use the word source as as opposed to God because it has a lot of constructs around it. But that deep connection that we feel to source puts us in that state of the very vivid unknown. Because then we start feeling ourselves as creator, without any of the ego, without any of the hierarchy, without any possibility of judgment does not exist and when you experience that state of all that is that kind of goes into then the metaphysical unknown your senses start changing your higher sensitivities and skills start to come online and that can be clairaudience claircognizance clairvoyance clairsentience telepathic skills connection to all that is, interaction with the field outside of meditation, where it becomes very flowy and very full of gratitude. There is a lot of love available. The other unknown, of course, is relationships, which, re which relates to social change. But, uh, but that's something that, that other people are experiencing too. And as those old things get stripped away, the unknown can be very frightening. Even when it comes to earth changes. Now, the, we're seeing the global predictions playing out. Not doom and destruction, but the, the, the scientific changes, the increases in earthquakes, floods, droughts, the solar, the, effect, the effects of the solar maximum, the electron and proton ion storms and elevations, the increase in the Schumann resonance of the planet is a blatant physical example of this frequency shift because our dimensions are based on frequency. Our reality is based on frequency. And if the planet's going to change the parameters by which we experience our reality, it affects everything, and that puts us into that space of the unknown. 
even in the galaxy with the, the planets getting hotter and brighter right in our own solar system and the, the photon belt is, is upon us. There's a lot of um, challenges to our truth. The unknown is what is really happening and what is going to happen. Those questions start coming up and it's our, our idea of the unknown, our individual experience of the unknown is based on our perceptions, our prior beliefs and agreements, our ability to adapt to change, the level of consciousness that we are able to attain. Not, not everyone's going to feel the same thing, of course. And our beliefs about the external and the internal, the influence of the external and the versus the internal wisdom can affect how our unknown is experienced and being how how flexible are we about the unknown how flexible are we about what is unfolding right now so the truth can be a very personal individual experience it's highly influenced by the external for some and that's where our, the life the life path that that internal truth the, the of the life path showing something that challenges the reality or expands the, the consciousness doesn't happen for everyone. Religion and spirituality get, get challenged when the unknown starts to move its way into our reality because our reality is changing right now. It's good not to freak out <laughs> when things change. But everyone has their, their individual interpretation of not just what is going to occur. I'm not talking about predictions, and I'm not talking about anxiety. I'm talking about the ability to be open and flexible about what is unfolding right now. And it seems like when it comes to levels of consciousness, levels of awakening, levels of the ascension process, the folks who are stepping right into full acceptance of what that crystalline Christ chrysalis state of consciousness has to offer are experiencing something vastly different from folks who are, are at a different level. And that's not hierarchy, it's just a different experience. It's not good or bad. And that, that non-judgment, that non-attachment to outcome expectation that ego or emotion or anything is a is a great place to be because that's where the freedom is that flexible reality where you're stretching your boundary boundaries <laughs> you're you're taking what you decided was true and kind of testing possibilities along the way part of the ascension process is exploring the creative process of beingness of this reality. And when you realize the connection to all, not just humanity and the planet, but source itself, it, let's, let's try to be flexible about even what source might be experiencing. Because every time we make a decision, it tends to get busted up. So let's just be flexible. It's a lot easier to, to ride through this with that, that crystalline consciousness state of all is well, how can I serve? All is well. well. I want to feel more. I want to know more. That unity consciousness is no separation. So it recognizes all the experiences playing out right now all the different expressions of awakening and ascension with complete non-judgment, non non-attachment, and that detached compassion of truly being able to assist. Now, in my own personal journey, 
I've had some experiences throughout my life that have always tied in with the Pleiadians and the Arcturians. Even as, as a child, uh, I remember I was raised Roman Catholic. I remember sitting in church waiting for Mass to begin, and we used to get there early because my dad was, was in the choir. So my mom and I were sitting in, in the pews waiting for Mass to begin, not a lot of people around, and the, the, the votive candles. In a Catholic church, you have like rows of these little votive candle holders, and there's these little glass rows probably like six rows of them and about yeah, 25 in, in each row. And people go over and they, they make a donation and they light a candle for a friend who's sick or someone who died or a specific prayer. Typically it's put in one corner of the church. And we had that at, at the church that I went to. And there were a couple of candles lit in, lit in this votive holder. And when I looked over at the votives, the rows started to flash like a marquee, one after the other, top row one after the other, second row one after the other, and I don't mean lighting up, I mean lighting up and going out again, not staying lit, one after the other, like trace, tracer lights, and it went through this series of all the rows of candles from, from left to right, one after the other, and I'm watching this, and it went through all the candles, and it went through all the candles, and it went through all the candles, and then it froze in a pattern. And I remember, first of all, elbowing my mom and saying, did you see that? And she she's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Maybe it was wind or whatever. I'm like, okay. And, and I was quite young, and I went home and wrote down the, and, and put down this pattern because there seemed to be something important about the pattern. And I wrote down, it looked like kind of like a C and a little square and a little dot off to the side. And in this journal that I was keeping of very deep personal thoughts, which included um, writing my own version of the Bible, which included uh, all women, <laughs> So that, that kind of explains the state of mind that I was in back in grade school. But, uh, and, and there were no martyrs or anything like that. Everybody was just like powerful and beautiful and, and taking care of, you know, the entire galaxy. It was pretty cool. But I remember writing this down and stumbling across it later. And I was like, oh yeah, C squared dot. I don't know what that is. And I remember it was important to kind of hold on to that. Like, someday I'm going to know what that was about. Later on in college, uh, I did some past life regression, just playing around with some friends who wanted to do it, and was like, okay, and a friend guided me through a past life regression. And it was a typical, you know, we just read out a book. One of us, you know, gets on the couch, and we're like, okay, you, you, you do three lifetimes, you go back further, 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 and then you have a question at the end. And you just describe what you're experiencing to your friend, and they take notes. So I went back, you know, Vic Victorian farmer, uh, medieval times. And then the, the third time I went back even further, uh, op you know, open my eyes. You, you, know, you walk through the door, you open your eyes, you look down and start describing your clothing. And then you step out of yourself, turn around and take a look. And I was an alien. Not like, you know, a gray or green or anything like that, but I was um, uh, what I what I now know as as Pleiadian, the, you know, almond eyes and the, and the kind of androgynous figure, dark hair and felt felt that to the core of being that and I was up on a mountain and I was actually a uh, a guide with with folks that were in this setting that looked very much like Atlantis. So I kind of held on to that for a little while, that experience, because I didn't understand it. And the question that I asked at the end of that was, I want to know wh what God is. Because I was still kind of struggling with that. You know, I was like 20. And my, my Pleiadian self 
asked the question at the end, you know, the, the friend is guiding and said, okay, now I ask your question. And I looked up toward the sky and the question was, I want to know what God is. And I looked up at the sky and had that experience of infinity being everywhere all at once, going into the sky, into the systems, into the universe, into the the mind and heart and and beauty and infinite substance of everything. Which is kind of, <laughs> which is a, a really brilliant experience to have um, so young and, and after that uh, past life regression that was a little bit strange. So the Pleiadians have, have been around because just a few years ago, I realized that the, the pattern that I had seen in the church and the candles was the Pleiades. It was just looking at it from the from the other side, which was <laughs> which is kind of odd, uh, not from the Earth view, from the from the other side of the Pleiades. But those those things have been with me, but I have not been attached to just being Pleiadian, just being that, because the Arcturians have presented too. And when I say presented, they've never presented in the physical until the last couple of years. And I'll explain what, what that means. But the, it's never been they show up in my room or whatever. They've always been in meditation or in clairaudient messages. All the messages that I got um, when I went suddenly clairaudient back in 99 were from the Pleiadians and the Arcturians. And the, the Arcturians technically are kind of the, the parents of the Pleiadians. You know, they, they came first and, uh, and they're more evolved. Uh, the Pleiadians are, are a much younger race. Um, but those, I always had a strong tie to them. And then the, the Syrians just started presenting in the, in the last couple of years. But all of these kind of ties to these star families, I um, have always felt very connected to that. And after experiencing myself as that androgynous Pleiadian guide on this planet interacting with humans in a very natural way. No no separation, just of course, you know, I'm walking around and and uh, you know, people were very happy. It was it was a beautiful time. But it felt very natural. And this is I've always had this question of how do I find myself? How do I know the truth about myself? And in order to get there, I had to go into that unknown. And the ascension process fully supports venturing into the unknown, as, as we all know. And our, our truth gets changed, the unknown starts changing, and we're revealing more and more of ourselves. We do all the work with the, the self-love and the emotional clearing. And then we start accepting and activating and stepping into our mastery with the, the physical and our own consciousness. And if we're open to it, we can continue to ask, show me more of myself, show me more of myself. And it's, it's beautiful because it's the same question that Source is asking when it creates ev everything that is. It's, it's always, let me know more of myself. Let me know everything there is to know about this state of unconditional love. And then an entire universe is built on that. So, so I want to share something with you that is, is just another step. I I thought it I thought it was kind of a big deal uh, a week and a half ago and then I told myself I need to get over it <laughs> because this is this is just like a natural step in in this process of, of unification and this process of, of getting us all together. So as as many of you know, last fall prior to the 11/11, I had an experience of of um, experiencing myself in different levels, in different dimensions, different expressions of myself, 
uh, all the way up to, to, to the 12th dimension. And they get more and more unified as you go up. But the, the lower dimensional expressions, one of which is in, in a, as a sixth dimensional expression, is on a light ship. And that is the, the dimensional expression that I'm able to experience um, more easily than, than the others. Um, and for some reason, it skips from, from 6 to 9 to 12. I don't know why. The 12th dimensional expression I can recall, but it's not as strong and, and interactive as that 6 dimensional light ship experience with a lot of, there's different races on the ship and it's always um telepathic you know there's not chit chat and bells and whistles and everything like that going off it's it's uh, it's actually quite quiet and calm and of course and we're all focused on Gaia at the moment and if you want you can go back and, and listen to that show from earlier in the year when I covered multidimensionality and and dimensional structure now in our mastery we're always talking to our higher levels. And if you've if you've had a session with me or or heard me talk before, welcoming forth your higher self is an important part of the process and I'm always in communication with my higher levels, always talking to myself, the 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 true self and not just asking for things but kind of powwowing, you know, getting together and going, "Okay, uh, what what's what's happening now? What's going on with the the shift? What's going on with ascension? And just communicating about the highest way to unfold this this path because I always want to be of pure service. I always want to make sure that what I'm doing is in the in the greatest interests of all concerned. So, on this way to unifying the higher levels, not a higher self stepping in, but in this unification of every expression that I am, I've been asking for every expression that I am to align and focus right here, right now on the moment that I'm in. I don't ask for it all day, just as sp at specific moments when I want <laughs> everyone, all of me's attention. And typically, I do that on the mountain when I'm about to meditate or, or explore something or have a, a good conversation with Source, which I do often now. So after I've, I've experienced these kind of Pleiadian interactions and then saw myself again in this six-dimensional expression with the light ship level, I was up on the mountain about a week and a half ago during my retreat asking all of my expressions to align and focus on the right here, right now, on the mountain. And of course Shasta is just a, a hotbed of energy right now, and it's beautiful and it's intense on, on some days. But when it comes to unifying and really welcoming forth the higher self, I'm, I'm there. I'm in that state of gratitude and love for the experience, how this is unfolding, respect for everyone's journeys, honoring them, asking questions, and attempting, asking for the highest expression of service and the highest expression of love and myself and my skills that I can do. I, I don't want to be a martyr and I don't want to be a savior. Um, we're all done with that. I'm just talking about being, uh, setting the pure intention to be a pure conduit of source intelligence in the highest way that I can be. It doesn't have to be some huge grandiose agenda. Just let, let me do what I'm here for. Show me, show me, show me. Always asking, go ahead and show me. Go ahead and take command. Go ahead to higher levels uh, and give it to me. So, so this has been something that I've been working on for a while. And to me, that is the journey of mastery. So in Last, uh, last year, when I was in Asheville, in the fall, where I had that multidimensional exploration, I had a strong connection to the Arcturians, and that Arcturian corridor that was available prior to the 1111, where you could play with this multidimensional travel and your multidimensional operating system, 
in a brand new way. That was the first time that we could play with it. It was all of a sudden it just like came online. And there were there were moments when I would look up at the sky at night and ask the Arcturians, go ahead and show me, uh, show me that you're around and would get the zigzagging light chip or zigzagging light overhead and just say thank you and didn't think twice about it. Just like, okay, every time you ask, and I actually did this in outside of Chicago too with my best friend. My best friend saw it as well. I was like, let's just ask. Go ahead and show. You know, go ahead and show up and see what happens. And it it seems like those requests are are being answered now so and and there was a a time when I was walking up the mountain by myself and it was getting dark and it's like a a a two mile hike up the mountain started way too late knew that I wouldn't be able to see anything as there was no street lights and asked my higher levels to (laughs) step in and give me some guidance keep the bears away the whole thing and as I was walking and the the light is is dying on the mountain there was a big wavy big I'm a big I'm not going to say orb like because then everyone's going to think of like the stuff that shows up on your on your pictures when you use a flash but um it was like a wavy ball of vibrating energy that was just ahead of me and for some reason I had just enough light to get all the way home and it was so dark that I, I literally had to like walk up to where I thought street signs were and get really close and see if I could read you know where I was it was just pitch black but this this wavy energy ball was like was like just ahead of me over the road so I just kind of followed that and it kind of guided me home and I said thank you and had no idea was that the Arcturians I was playing with them back then didn't know but when it comes to the pursuit of finding one's self I was was guided, got the nudge, got the intuition to take that three-day retreat um, last week, um, weekend before last. And while I was up there, I, at nighttime, I would get out my little camp chair and I would sit down and I wanted to have a conversation with Source about this dimensional liaison thing that's been presenting. I don't know where the term comes from. And back in February, it started to present. And when I say it starts to present, all of a sudden it's like coming into my consciousness of dimensional liaison and portals opening within the body that will allow for a new experience for humanity. And I'll be able to to give some guidance on that. And I didn't know what it was about, but I said, okay, I want it to be co-created with complete alignment with pure source, light, intelligence, no interference, only beings of the highest integrity can can work on this with me. And I kind of let it go, reminded myself that it was occurring, asked whoever was working on it to continue to work on it, and I just kind of haven't touched it. I know it's there, but what what started occurring in uh, during Solstice Week was some folks that were in the group or whatever started having these these interesting uh, interdimensional, multidimensional experiences uh, when I was around. And I didn't know if it had anything to do with me or not, but I wasn't actually involved directly in those experiences. I, I wasn't partaking in the ceremony or anything like that. But, you know, standing standing alone outside of, you know, this this cave or or outside of where people are meeting going okay I don't understand why I'm supposed to stay here but I'm just gonna do it and they're they, they end up having this experience so I was like well all right if that's what dimensional liaison means um you know I want to be in on the fun so let's expand that a little bit more and my understanding was that it was going to I was going to be able to provide an experience for for others to understand more of what they were or what what um, multidimensionality really meant. So with that intent, I started having this conversation about 
I, I want to know everything that I am. I want to know all of my expressions. Let me experience that. What's, what's available right now? And I started playing with the idea of first contact because first contact's been on a lot of people's minds, obviously it's floating around the collective because it pops up in my meditations all the time. Like we're going to be really, we're really close. And then during the May eclipse, during the Ring of Fire, you can go back and listen to that show from from a couple weeks ago. I experienced that that direct connection to the Pleiades, and it was like a, a phone home kind of thing, where uh, they were saying, "Oh, we're, we're you're doing a great job. We're going to see you soon." And I was like, you know, just kind of brushed it off, like, "Well, galactic soon." You know, how long have we heard that? And they were like, "No, very soon." And there was just this like wave of, of love and energy that came over me saying, oh my gosh, we're there. We're there on the timeline. This is, this is, wow, this is, this is then. This is when this happens. Oh, wow. Okay, cool. I'm in, you know, I'm, uh, I'm ready. You know, what do we have to do? And it wasn't, but a couple of weeks after that, during the Venus transit that I, I jumped that timeline officially and made that choice to just reunite all of myself and the divine feminine stepped in and all of that wisdom and everything just came back. So considering that we are on we're on a decent sized planet. Not huge, but you know, it's it's big enough. And Shasta is is a good sized mountain, but I'm on a decent sized planet, on a big mountain in the woods, in the dark. Granted, I'm in a circle of trees, so there's a clearing. And me in my intuitive mastery start playing with the idea that maybe the dimensional liaison means I have to open up a portal. And I was pretty sure that the portal was within, but I'm like, well, just for ceremony's sake, drew two interlocking circles and made a vesica pisces and i'm like well how technical does it have to be and i started kind of giggling at the idea of this you know the 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 pleiadians and the arcturians that create a lot of beautiful crop circles and everything the geometry is very precise there's no way i'm getting it precise with a stick in the dust on the side of the mountain as it's approaching dusk so I'm like, well, uh, this probably doesn't matter anyway, but just for, for ceremony's sake, you know, I stuck some crystals in the ground and I, I drew a big heart in the middle of the Vesca Pisces for humor because obviously it was it was not um, any kind of sacred ge geometric perfection at all. Stood in the middle of it, opened it up, got Gaia's blessing, got Source's blessing, confirmed that only beings of the highest light could use it, blah, 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 blah. And stepped out of it, sat in my camp chair, and looked up at the heavens starting to pop open with stars, and started having this really deep connection to source, to all that is. Not a conversation with God, let's not go there. A deep connection with source as myself. And started bringing source into my, my, my consciousness, my conscious awareness, and saying, source, look at this, witness this moment, and, and feel this, just invited source right, and, and all of my higher levels right into the moment, saying, just everyone, just let's just feel this, all the expressions of me from source all the way down. Feel this moment, being on a planet that's experiencing this vast change after everything she's been through. And here's a human, after many, you know, thousands of years of amnesia, having this awakening experience, going into the ascension process, discovering ascension guidance along the way, sitting on a sacred mountain during the shift in consciousness, looking up at the heavens and feeling like source. Stepping in and, and feeling it, really feeling 
what it is like to be in a human body right now during the shift, waking up, embracing the the compassion and not judgment and harmony and balance, finally, of unconditional love, that light intelligence, and feeling like everything all at once and feeling the absolute beauty and gratitude for that moment, right, just absolute presence in that moment. And these the, the conversation, you know, I, I like to play with the, the metaphor of it and was just admiring the metaphor of it. I'm like, this is so brilliant. This universe is so brilliant. The, the dream of it and the, the, the awakening, this little microcosm of, of the awakening on this planet and to ascension and the awakening of humanity and during this dream state, you know, dream within a dream, awakening to a higher level of the dream. And it was just playing with this and, and having this conversation with Source and asked all of my higher expressions to align with me in unity absolutely align with me I'm like let me know let me feel all of myself right now everybody align all the higher expressions of Sandra everyone just put your focus right here right now just to feel the beauty of it I'm like are you and and started having this conversation about first contact I'm like what is it going to be for 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 you guys for the higher levels for the other races let's say you're a race on the on the inside of the earth i have no connection to telos or the, or the lemurians whatsoever i've been in shasta for a couple of months and i just i don't know if it's just not part of my journey or what's going on but i'm i'm just do not feel it at all but let's say you're a race that is inside the earth with with some kind of light in there and you decide that you're going to experience unity you decide that it's time to emerge. What is that going to be like for those races to come to the surface and experience a completely different density and a different uh, ecosystem altogether? And how, how much fear do they experience coming to the surface and, and hearing, you know, are they hearing that, you know, all these rumors about what humanity's like and, and the, the, the terror of that? Or... Do they see through all the veils as, as we're beginning to and realize that that is, is dissolving away and that we're coming back to who we truly are? And then when it comes to off-world existence, what has to occur in order for it to be safe to land? For, for the freq- Does it have to be a higher frequency if they're already in, if my higher expressions are already experiencing a different density, how close can we get at this time? How, when it comes to landings, how, how, how much do, do they, the higher expressions of ourself, have to lower their vibration in order to come into this uh, density? Or are we just experiencing, like I've said before, that shadow of, of 3D going away and we're already the vibration of the planet is already there. We're just kind of catching up to what's actually going on, experiencing the shadow of of the end of of that old paradigm playing out. And it's actually we're actually at the frequency already that supports uh, first contact, a landing of some kind. And we tend to think of what it what is it going to be like for us. But I was really considering. What is it like for the other races? What has it been like for them? How much of my journey are they familiar with? How much of how it feels are they familiar with? Will we have the opportunity to exchange stories? Or is it a matter of we raise our consciousness and suddenly know everything that they've been through? We unify with our our higher levels, the higher expressions of ourselves somehow, and don't it, there there is no sitting around the campfire sharing stories or or exploration 
I hope there is. I hope that we have that opportunity because that's the the beauty of it is exchanging our experiences. What has it been like in inner earth? What has it been like in the Pleiades? What has it been like in this galactic battle that they've been engaged in while we've been asleep? Are they curious about what it has felt like to have amnesia and recover from that and rediscover all of ourselves. And when we do, what's the new path of the human race? And when I ask Source, is there more to just returning to what we were and then we're the, the I am race, the I am presence? Do we get to then travel the galaxy as as masters? Do, you know, what what occurs? And the the response was it's going to be brilliant. It's going to be the unknown. So there's definitely something else after all of this, but the it, it looks like the plan right now is, um, is, is, again, multidimensional as we go through this, this evolution, which is the ascension process. So as I was having this discussion and talking about the metaphor and just praising everybody for their involvement and, and asking, you know, how does this go down? What are you curious about? What do you, what do you want to know? Because I'm very curious about what their journey has been like, what my higher expressions are experiencing right now. And it was just beautiful. I just spoke out loud to the stars with my heart swelling with gratitude and love and and a few light chips began to kind of sail directly overhead which is not uncommon on Shasta and if you watch for a while and drop all of the it's a satellite okay the satellites tend to fly in a straight line and they don't disappear so it's when I say light chips are flying overhead it looks like a star that's a lot closer that is in they're in different colors and they appear disappear don't fly in a straight line zoom all over the place slow down speed up it's um it is definitely not a satellite so let's not explain it away as satellites the other thing is i think at this point you have to get over the whole um idea that light chips or or every single ufo is a uh, a, a government hoax so I, I think you need to let that go or at least for the length of this program let's let that go um i know a lot of people have that judgment going on but i think you're kind of missing out on the fun <laughs> if you're just standing there going ah it's probably black ops and the, the helicopters are showing up and you know that's all just a big game a big hoax or whatever um, because when I'm sitting there talking, you know, and, and I always ask the light ships, okay, zigzag or something. So I know you're not a satellite and they always do. And they're not just flying in the same patterns anymore. It's, it's, it's very, very scattered. So on the first night I'm watching, watching this activity and kind of joking around going, well, it, you know, I if I have a light chip expression, I'm certainly not going to travel in a straight line or just do some brief zigzagging like that. You know, I'm 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 a smart aleck down here, so I'm probably going to be a, a wise ass up there. So, you know, have a little fun with it. This is, you know, how much can we play with each other? How much can we connect with each other? How much can we enjoy this? And on the first night, one one of the ships came out of nowhere. It looked like it came out of a constellation, got very close and was just a, a spinning white blue light. And I say spinning because the light would would shine down on the planet and then disappear as if it, it had lights on one side and was just kind of tumbling. And it looked just beautiful, graceful, tumbling out of this constellation toward toward the earth and then sailed off but the thing was the light was was shining right on me right over this open circle which is like this little patch of sky that I can see 
and it was gorgeous. And I was like, oh, whoa, thank you. You know, and it felt very natural. I wasn't gasping. It was, it was beautiful. I was like, oh, thank you. That was gorgeous. Thank you. And, and, and that was cool. That, that was in, enough for me. And it was, it was getting late and, you know, a few of the light ships had, had zigzagged and, and done some fun stuff and everything. I was like, okay, enough for the, enough of the UFO watch and, and retired for the night, went to bed and I'm in my tent and, and everything was great. And the next night I decided I would do the same thing and started you know, goofing around with this portal thing. And I was like, well, I think it's, it's more of the, the portal within and started having the, the deep conversation with, with the stars and, and, and asking source to, to step in and kind of witness a little bit. And then I was asking my, my higher expressions to align again. I was like, can, can everyone just have their focus right here? Okay. All higher levels, higher dimensions, expressions of me. Everyone just bring their focus right here. If indeed I am this sixth dimensional expression on a light ship, how close can we get? How much can we connect? How, how, how much are we allowed to do? I understand and honor and respect cosmic timing. Nobody wants to freak out the population and endanger Gaia or, or any kind of unfoldment of the, the highest interests of all concerned. Nobody wants to send everybody into panic, judgment, fear, whatever. So I just asked openly, in the highest interests of all concerned, how, how much can we connect? How close are we to first contact? Show me. Let me know. And the, the cool thing which occurred was, uh, you know, I'm, I'm starting to get light chips again, which is... Uh, you know, which which was felt just again very natural. It doesn't feel like I'm I'm pointing and going ooh ah or whoa. There's another one. Just like laying back in my camp chair, you know, with my my head against the back of the chair, completely relaxed, having these like metaphoric discussions. And along comes this light ship, and it's getting a little closer. And I know everyone's going to ask, how close, how close was it? I don't know. I don't know how big these things are. But cl close enough that it looks like a a big round uh, or, or more like oval, um, a ball of light. It looks like all light. Can't make out like individual lights or whatever. It's, it's glowing. It's kind of gold colored this one in particular but but it's definitely closer than the other one so I'm like okay and I look up and I'm watching this ship go by and there's no drama no nothing and I was like okay well you can you how close are we to contact and just and loving feeling the love with this with this this light ship just feeling this this connection and just loving it and loving the the moment of it and the metaphor of it and and the like the moment before contact just feeling it very present just like oh wow we're so close thank you so much for coming so close thank you and the ship turned on a beam of light golden light and the, it's right over my head and shines straight down on me. Not a flash, not a zipping by, hey, you doing? But like lingers and shines this light on me. And it just, it, it comes out of the ship and it's not like a laser beam or anything like that. It's just, it's like a hello, but it's more than a flash. It's just like beam and then it retracts the beam. And I didn't, my body didn't flinch or anything. And I was like, oh, thank you, brothers. Thank you. I appreciate that. And then I have this overwhelming feeling. And look at the ship again, because that's how slow it's going that I'm able to just watch this thing. Still over my campsite. 
and I'm watching it and this feeling comes over me and I say, oh my gosh, are you me? And it happens again. It shines at me again, kind of like, yes. And I felt this and and then it, you know, scooted its way out of out of sight into the trees. And this overwhelming feeling of wisdom and unconditional love and gratitude just overcame me. It felt beautiful. And I wasn't like weeping on the spot or having a breakdown or anything. It felt so natural. I was just like, oh, wow. That is deeply profound and beautiful. Now, when it comes to interpretations of what happened or what didn't happen, that moment, me, my connection and and my path, you know, the, the stuff has been presenting for a while and now had the the experience of being on the ship and then to be able to ask that question out loud and have what appears to be a yes shine right in my face in such a gentle, loving way and then have this this feeling of overwhelming gratitude and understanding and not being smothered in love and light you know let's let's uh, um, don't go there I'm talking about like a deep gratitude and understanding was was extremely profound and for me this venture into the unknown is is unveiling (laughs) lifting the veils on on what the truth is for me, I'm not saying everyone's going to experience that. Probably, probably not. Um, or at least interpret it the way that I'm interpreting it. And granted, I've always been creative. I've always, always been an artist. And I love the, the metaphor of it and the beauty of that moment of reuniting the self. And it was, it was good enough during the Venus transit when I had a, a fire and was, you know, rekindling my, my sacred fire. I was like, oh, this is such a beautiful metaphor. Well, here we are with another beautiful metaphor. And not only that, in the midst of this conversation with all that is, with source and star brethren and all of my higher levels having this conversation of talking openly to them and and not just asking questions but saying what you know I understand service now it's such a no-brainer of course I will help let let me know I'm good right now with my process I'm feeling beautiful I'm feeling open I'm feeling gratitude whatever whenever whatever you let me know and not a uh you know I don't need the the clouds to open up and a lightning bolt to come down in order to to know what uh, what has to occur next but when it comes to mastery of this dream this metaphor of universe it feels like to me that our truth this individual experience gets to unfold however we desire it to. And it feels like that is part of stepping back into that creator state, that knowing the self is source, the pure human genome of creator incarnate form. And I'm starting to have a deep understanding of what that means and not just the responsibility of it. There's no... There's no ego or power or hierarchy involved at all. Absolutely not. It does feel it does feel like a profound wisdom and and stillness and joy and 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 beauty. It is brilliant, magnificence. Without all the, the bells and whistles and the giant wings and all all that stuff for me, that 
that was my all, all the angels coming forth with trumpets, <laughs> you know, that that metaphor of of joy felt so natural, like, oh, okay, another another level, another unfoldment uh, of this incredible journey that we're all that we're all on. And I wondered if there was a level of trust between, okay, is there, should I just not say anything? Because if, when I'm having these discussions and saying, what, what do you need? Do you need, you need somebody with property, big empty space where you can like sit down and, and not have to go anywhere? Cause you're certainly not going to land on Shasta, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's a, uh, you know, very few clear areas. And if you did, I mean, it just seems like you can't really stay there. There's, you know, there's people camping, wandering around. There's, there's girls sitting in, in camp chairs outside of her tent talking to the stars, you know, like, what are you going to do? So uh, that, you know, whatever they need, whatever we need to, to land will, will happen. Haven't received that answer yet. In the meantime, unity of the higher and lower levels it becomes something uh, co- quite different now. Experiencing that, knowing that it was there, but but that kind of experience of um, of having that kind of answer come out of the skies is uh, is quite profound. Not scary at all. <laughs> I gotta say, not not um, not intimidating, not scary, nothing like that. So so as this continues um and now my experiences are um are are starting to happen on the ground and i don't mean that people don't go to shasta expecting to see ufos landing on the ground it's not has not happened to to the best of my ability it hasn't happened to me yet i don't know maybe it's happening to other people however um i'm starting to experience some pretty intense presence around me in in the woods and and kind of discussing what what that feels like as it's unfolding and and I have like a little tape recorder and I'm just like discussing what I'm going to write down of of how that feels it almost feels like like you're a virgin about to make love for the first time you know there's like anxiety or you know about the 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 other person and the the other being and everything but but it's just like the the desire is there and you re, you really want to touch each other and and but you want to be careful and you know maybe that's a, a terrible metaphor I don't know how your first experience was but there's that that moment before energy is very present in in my life right now and uh and i again with the dimensional a zone thing does it mean i get first contact i don't know for me the contact that i've had already with the stuff shining right down on me like a spotlight i i would consider that um uh pretty profound you know and it's definitely not a helicopter or a plane completely silent and sources of light and and golden colors and stuff that I I have not seen um, from any plane or anything like that. So everyone's just going to have to get over it anyway. Um, so, but my 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 body vehicle didn't even flinch. I mean, it felt like divine grace and a level of trust seemed to be involved. And I did ask if I could share this because. I like to share, you know, every inch of my journey, as y'all know, and the if you can just play with the metaphor of reuniting the self and having that occur and how beautiful that is, um, you know, go there, run with it, because my experience is your experience, darlings. This is all of us having these experiences, and as we get to share them now openly, on the radio, on the internet, however you like, it is, um, I, I felt it was not important because then it makes it sound like it's important, but, you know, it is, uh, it complements a further understanding of 
look at what is occurring here so that folks don't just focus on the chaos. And it doesn't mean it, they're coming to help us or what it is us. But the the idea of it just being, come and help us, land soon, fix everything, that did not even enter. It does not enter any of those moments. Rather, when you're stepping into this crystalline consciousness, it's more of a welcome, what do you need? How do we do this? How do we get to know each other again in a new way? How do we get to know each other and assist what's happening on the planet? It's a very peaceful, divine feeling in that moment and huge uh, traction in in the heart center just feeling that pull not like oh here I go but that pull of love just really feeling it just gorgeous um, very comforting very comforting really just just so so blessed with this unity consciousness shift it's amazing really amazing um and I wanted to share it with you. So, so that was uh, <laughs> that was my my experience on the mountain. But I wanted everyone to to kind of feel into that and understand that um, this this unification of worlds, and and for those of us who get to walk between, um, this this may or may not be. Uh, the next step we've definitely had enough dimensional travel and a lot of folks doing the astral thing and the remote viewing thing and uh and and experiencing but i you know i for one have never invited in channeling and and actually d denied it when it started presenting i'm like no i do not want to be a channel just me just me just me i only <laughs> I, I only want to express my myself and and didn't do not want still do not want to leave the planet during the shift forget it i don't want to go anywhere else this is this is i know this is where my job is uh until further notification um but i really feel that i, I really feel that we are here for that so there is no no be me up scotty uh mentality with my journey at all um i truly truly believe that many of us are here to, to assist um, humanity right through this shift. And it's wild to perceive that we're at this point on this ascension timeline where this kind of thing starts to happen. And I know that we, we hit that acceleration on Monday when stuff starts to, uh, starts to speed up. Some of us just got hit like, you know, right in the solar plexus or anxiety or whatever. But it's all is well trust me on this it's 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 going to be good <laughs> it's going to be very good but if we're at this point i i don't i the reason why i didn't want to talk about it last week is because i didn't want people rushing to shasta to to look for ets i i do believe and know that they're all over the place and for for my brethren to find me again on a pretty big planet on a pretty big mountain in a tiny little campsite in a in a chair in the middle of a circle of trees you know at 8,000 feet is um is makes it feel so natural like like you don't have to worry about that uh, first of all occurring or not occurring I, I had already felt into it and asked, is our, our landings already occurring, and, and got a yes. And I'm not the type to say, well, I, I want to see a landing, you know, because I, I know, you know everything will happen as it's supposed to happen. I don't know if that's part of my journey or not. However, when, I'm, when I want to know all of myself, knowing everything that I truly am, and receive an experience like what occurred for me a week before last, I feel extremely grateful that this is 
presenting the way it is, that it's honoring my my expression as, as a creative person, really loving the metaphor, and that it followed those deep conversations with my higher levels all the way back to to source, where I'm just openly sharing how I'm feeling, not asking for anything outside of let let me know more of myself and letting it be and saying, what do you need? What do you need? What has to occur? What's, you know, how, how can I serve? And from that pure crystalline sense of service, this state of unity consciousness begins to make more sense than any other truth that came before it, believe me. Um, our, when it comes to being flexible about what's going to occur and how the truth expands and continues to expand and getting glimpses of, of how it's going to feel to be a, a, a fully divine human after the shift and what do we get to do then and and getting the answer like hey you know let, let's just walk before you run okay <laughs> you know that kind of thing um it's fantastic it's really magnificent the magnificence is unfolding my friends and it's beautiful and i really feel that this is this is a step in that mastery of understanding in that calm state of freedom from all the the drama and chaos that has been and moving into the state of calm neutrality discernment that divine wisdom it really is divinity stepping right in and it's beautiful now it is uh august next week and I'm going to take uh, two weeks off from the radio show for, for the next two Wednesdays. There will be no broadcast from me. However, there are archive shows all the way back to um, February, March at this point. And feel free to listen to those if you miss me. Oh, I know you're going to miss me. In the meantime, uh, I'm just taking time off from the radio show. I'm going to be writing and I will be doing private sessions. So if you want to contact me, just go to my website and the address is in the listing and in the little the little jingle at the end. And I'm going to be starting to uh, formulate a, a mastery class, which I'm looking forward to. That'll probably begin in late August, September. So that's coming up. And I'm going to send out a newsletter uh, today, Wednesday, uh, July 25th, uh, happy day in between, everybody. Um, uh, I'm going to send out a newsletter and just kind of d describe, you know, recap w uh, what's going on and the changes that um, that I'm going to try to tackle in the next couple weeks. I just need some, some clear time to uh, get some materials together. And uh, freeing myself from the radio show just gives me a little more brain space because uh, obviously a lot going on right now. Uh, thank you very much for, for listening to this broadcast. I truly appreciate the, the comments and the compliments um, that folks send in. Uh, I, uh, it's a little overwhelming to, to just kind of have an idea to do a radio show. And then the next thing you know, there's you know, 4,000 people listening. Um, that, that to me is, shows uh, how many people out there are experiencing something different with their ascension process. I know I, I don't preach about um, ascension being leaving the planet or, or you have to do this or have to do that in order to ascend. I do feel it's a very individual choice as to how you want to accelerate the process and what you want to experience. And sharing this, this very personal private um, experience that, that I've had in the last couple of weeks, um, feels it feels good, feels right. You know, there was definitely a little trepidation about whether I should share that or not because the, the, the ET UFO topic has been um, not taboo, but it's just been like turned into a, 
somewhat of a circus. And, and I, I honor all the work that's being done with disclosure and, and, and all of the, uh, the, the stuff that has occurred in the past that people are just fighting to, to still be revealed. And I don't feel that it even has to be. I think we should just let it go. Uh, I feel like we're, we should really focus on what's occurring right here, right now, and, and get our hearts and our bodies in the right place in order to, to receive all of ourselves, which includes um, our friends and family that uh, apparently would like to start interacting with us in a profound way. And it's a, it's a beautiful, wow, this is just such a, an amazing shift. I'm, I'm continually blown away by the beauty and brilliance of this journey. So that said, uh, thank you again for, for listening. And uh, if you would like a session, please send me an email. In the meantime, I'm going to be away for a couple of weeks off the radio. And in the meantime, please have a beautiful and creative journey. This has been Ascension Integration with Sandra Walter. For more information on Ascension or Ascension Counseling, visit Sandra on the web at www.sandrawalter.com. Thank you.